location of integrals is to find the centroid of a region in a plane. Um, and we do this through actually finding our center of mass of a planar lamina um, of a uniform mass to kind of develop it and then say how we can make that adjustment to find the centroid of a region in a plane. So this video we're going to talk a little bit about the formulas that need to be used and then look at our application of integrals of an example. <clears throat> so here moments in center of mass of a planar um, lamina. So when we have this work with just on a horizontal axis or a vertical axis, we're looking at the distance times the mass to get that equilibrium, um, like a fulcrum, for example. But if we have this over a region that is a two-dimensional in a plane, then we have to account for all of the different changes throughout that, and that's where we're adding up each of these throughout in the application then of the definite integral. So here, let f and g be continuous functions such that my function f of x is greater than or equal to g of x um, on our closed interval. So really when you're looking at a specific example, you can't be tied to which one's called f of x and which one's called g of x specifically in the example. You have to say, well, whichever one is the function that is higher in the region is what's represented by f of x in this definition, and whichever one is lower on the plane is the one that's represented by g of x in this particular definition. <clears throat> now it says you've got those functions on a closed interval from a to b, so that means that the endpoints are included, and that this is of uniform density rho. And it's bounded by y equal f of x and y equal g of x on that closed interval. So if you have those conditions, then when we talk about the moments about the x and y axis, remember our moments are equal to our mass times our distance. Um, but because this is a changing region that's, um, or the, sorry, the region that is bounded by curves, so it's not like uh, just a horizontal distance or a vertical distance, so we have to account for that in our work of it. So our moment about the x and the y-axis are as follows. So the moment about the x-axis is your density times the definite integral from a to b, that interval that you're over, of the average of the function values in each of those strips that we take, so f of x plus g of x divided by 2, and then times your f of x minus g of x, so the top function minus the bottom function, dx. So that's your moment about the x-axis. Now the moment about the y-axis is still your density rho times the definite integral from a to b of x times that higher function f of x minus that lower function g of x dx. Now if I have those both for the moments about the x-axis and the moment about the y-axis, um, that's your moments. Now the center of mass, x bar comma y bar, so you kind of think about that being the our center of our mass is the x-coordinate of the center of max of mass is the moment about the y-axis divided by the total mass, and the y-coordinate in our center of mass is the moment about the x-axis divided by the mass. Now your mass you can calculate by taking your density times the definite integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx. So again, top function minus bottom function, if we're doing the dx, is the mass of it. So when we talk about this in terms of that setting, we have to have the density as a factor in there. When we're looking at finding this as the centroid of a region in the plane, we can actually just take rho to be 1, and we would be able to get our coordinates of our centroid um, for our plane region. And that's kind of like your balancing point of the region. If you had it and you cut it out and you were balancing it like on the pen point or the um, point of a pencil, that that region should balance at what we find this center of mass to be, or centroid. So here we have our two different functions, our um, 
The example that are asked to do is find the center of mass of the region bounded by y equal x squared and y equal x plus 2. Now, as with all of these types of um, situations where we were working with like area caught between two curves or when we're doing our volume of solids of revolution or all of those sorts of settings, we do need to graph these to make sure that we see what exactly it is that we're dealing with. And we need to figure out which of the functions is higher in the plane and which of the functions is lower in the plane to be able to make sure that we set up the formulas right. So over to the side here, I've graphed y equal x squared and y equal x plus 2. And this is dx, so you want to think of going from left to right through this enclosed region with your vertical subrectangles. So when we think about that then, what each of these are doing is here you're taking your f of x plus your g of x and you're dividing it by 2 within that little slot. So that's your averaging that way and then times your f of x minus g of x. And then for this one it's the x coordinate times it. So you want to think of that into the regions. Now as you look across this from left to right, the y equal x plus 2 is the top curve, and the x squared is the part that would be on the bottom of those subrectangles. So, in terms of what we have in the setup and what we have in this problem, this y equal x plus 2 is the one that's on the top. So that's the one that's playing the role of f of x in the definitions. And our y equal x squared, that's the one that's on the bottom of the vertical subrectangles. So that's the one that's playing the g of x role. So when we go through and we set up each of these pieces, our moment about the x axis, so m sub x, is equal to our rho times the definite integral from the x-coordinate of the start of the region to the x-coordinate of the end of the region. So that's going to be at x equal negative 1 to x equal 2. And remember, if it's not easy to find those x-coordinates on your graph, um, what you would do would be to take these two equations. You want the ordered pair where they both hit. So since they're both solved for y, you'll just set them equal to each other and find the x's that do that. Okay, so we're doing the moment about the x-axis. So we have the rho times the definite integral from negative 1 to 2 of the average of the function values. So x squared plus x plus 2 divided by 2 times your top function minus your bottom function. So we saw that x plus 2 minus x squared, and then dx, that's your m sub x. Your m sub y, the moment about the y-axis, is rho times the definite integral from negative 1 to 2 of x times the top function minus the bottom function, so x plus 2 minus the x squared, dx, and then the mass, m, is rho times the definite integral from negative 1 to 2 of just your top function minus your bottom function. So that's the x plus 2 minus the x squared, dx. Okay, so now we're going to go through and calculate um, these. And uh, what I'll do is go ahead and clear off the board, bring these up to the top so that you can see the work with it, and we'll get our center of mass. Now let's go ahead and do the calculations. So here let's go ahead and find the moment about the x-axis first. Um, I've just brought the setup that we wrote on the previous screen up a little bit higher to do the work below. Now, for this, 
I have multiplication through and this gives me a division by 2 here when we found the average of the y coordinates there. So I'm going to bring that constant of 1 half out in front and so I have rho over 2 times a definite integral from negative 1 to 2 of x squared plus x plus 2 times x plus 2 minus x squared dx. Now I need to multiply these out in order to find the integral and then be able to plug in the endpoints. Um, and actually if you look at this very carefully, I've got x squared plus x plus 2 here and in this next parentheses I have x plus 2 minus x squared. So these two terms of x plus 2 are the same and I have a plus x squared and I have a minus x squared. So actually if I would have written this to start with as uh, x plus 2 plus x squared times an x plus 2 minus x squared. Um, and addition is commutative. I can change the order in addition and it still gives me the exact same result, so that would be fine to do. And if you think about these first two terms being the same, so we're multiplying where this x plus 2 is the same, and then I have a plus x squared and a minus x squared there. So really when you multiply this out, you can think of x plus 2 times x plus 2. Multiply that out. And then this outer and these inner, so to speak, so the x plus 2 times the negative x squared would cancel with the x squared times the x plus 2. So all of those middle terms would just end up canceling each other out anyway, and then you would have a minus x to the fourth. So if you do that e expansion of those polynomial, that polynomial multiplication, you're actually going to get x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus x to the fourth. So just a quicker way with this particular um, scenario with this uh, problem that we were able to get it a little bit faster than that. And if you wanted to just verify that, you would just take each of these terms times each of those terms, combine like terms, and you would still get this as your result. Now that's just multiplying it out. We still need to find the antiderivative. So we're going to integrate it. These are letter base to number power. So letter base to number power, you just add one to the exponent and divide by that. So I have one third x to the third plus add one to one, you get two dividing by two, four divided by two is two x squared and then plus four x minus one fifth x to the fifth, and that's evaluated from negative one to two. So then when you, then when you plug in the two, minus plug in the negative one, and multiply that by the row over two, you get that your m sub x is 36 row over two. Oops, sorry. 36 row over five. So you want to remember plug in your top number through minus plug in your bottom number through and you'll get 36 row over five. How about m sub y? Well for m sub y I just need to multiply x through before we find the antiderivative. So that's x squared plus 2x minus x to the third dx. So I will get rho times 1 third x to the third. Add 1 to the exponent divide. So that's plus x squared minus 1 fourth x to the fourth from negative one to two. Plug the two through. So one third times two to the third plus two squared minus one fourth times two to the fourth. And then minus 
plugging in the negative 1, 1 third times negative 1 to the power 3 plus negative 1 squared minus 1 fourth times negative 1 to the power 4. And then as you work that out, your m sub y comes out to be 9 rho over 4. And then lastly, for the overall mass, you have rho times, and I can just integrate this term by term. So 1 half x squared plus 2x minus 1 third x cubed. Evaluated from negative 1 to 2. And that becomes... 9 rho over 2. When you plug in 2 through the x's minus plug in negative 1 through the x's. Um, now we want to find our center of mass. So remember x bar is m sub y, the moment about the y-axis, divide by the mass. So our x bar is going to get my 9 rho over 4 divided by 9 rho over 2. So when you flip and multiply, the 9 rho will cancel. You'll get 2 over 4 or 1 half. For our y bar, the y coordinate of our centroid, it's the moment about the x-axis divided by the mass. So that's going to be the 36 row over 5. Divided by the 9 row over 2. And when you flip and multiply that, you're going to have, well, 9 goes into, the rows will cancel, 9 goes into 36 four times, and then you multiply that four times this two, and that'll be eight-fifths. So our centroid of this region is the ordered pair one-half, comma, eight-fifths. Now, if you... Remember, we're saying that's the center of mass fit. That's the centroid of that region. So when I come and look at right one-half, up one and three-fifths, like about right there. So if I had this like as cardboard with the uniform density, and I actually very carefully graphed it and cut out this region and marked that specifically, then if I held up a pencil, on that pencil tip at that dot, that cutout should balance exactly.